I'm Elwyn Burlekamp, and now I'm going to tell you about a game called Hackenbush. Hackenbush is played on a graph, each of whose branches can be any one of three colors, blue, red, or green. The graph must have a distinguished node called the ground. The ground is conventionally shown as a black line at the bottom of the graph. There are two players, called red and blue. Each player has a scissors of his own color. At each turn, he may cut a branch of his own color, or a green branch. After each cut, any branches and nodes which are no longer connected to the ground disappear. Hackenbush is a competitive game in which the players alternate turns. The goal is to get the last move. In other words, a player who is unable to move at his turn loses. That must be because no branches of his color nor any green branches remain, although there might or might not still be some branches of the opposing color. This game was invented by John Conway in 1970. Hagenbush has no conventional starting position. Any appropriately colored graph will do. So we view every position as another game. In this case, blue gets the last move. Red lost because it is his turn to move and there are no red or green branches. We sometimes need to associate the players with the directions left and right. R denotes both red and right. L denotes both left and blue. Blue is the color of our teams at Berkeley, whereas red is the color of our rival Stanford. So we view games from blue's perspective treating blue as positive and red as negative. In this situation, which occurred shortly before the end of the game we just saw, blue had three moves remaining and red had two plus one. So blue's net advantage was minus one plus three minus two. This game was so close that whoever needed to move next would lose. But after red played, the value of the game was positive. So this was now a winning position for blue, no matter whose turn it was to play next. In general, we'll say that a game is positive if L can win no matter who plays next, or negative if R can win no matter who plays next, or zero if either player can win if he is the second player. There are also Hackenbush games in which the first player can win. Such games are neither greater than zero, nor less than zero, nor equal to zero. They are confused with zero, and we say they are fuzzy. Here are the simplest examples of each of the four kinds of games. A single move for L is called plus one. A single move for R is called minus one. A game that has no moves for either player is called zero. It is a win for the second player because it is the first player's turn to move and he cannot do so. A single green branch is denoted by the symbol star. It is the simplest of many games which are wins for the first player. The primary goal of our studies of Hackenbush is to determine who can win. The answer must be one of four possibilities, either left or right or the second player or the first player. By restating these possibilities as positive, negative, zero, or fuzzy, we are able to apply mathematics to this question. For example, if G is a game in which left going second can win, that is equivalent to stating that G is greater than or equal to zero. If G is greater than zero, he wins because he is left. Or if G equals zero, he wins because he is going second. Now let us suppose that G and H are two different games, each of which left going second can win. Then we claim that left going second can also win on their sum. To see this, we suppose that red begins by making an arbitrary move in the H component of G plus H. This changes H to H prime, which is no longer greater than or equal to zero. But blue, following his winning strategy within H, can respond by changing h prime to h double prime, which is again greater than or equal to zero. Similarly, if red changes g to g prime, 
then blue can respond there, changing G prime back to some game G double prime, which is again greater than or equal to zero. In other words, by playing each component of the sum separately, blue ensures that he will get the last move within H and that he will also get the last move within G, and hence that he will get the last move in their sum. This illustrates an important fact, namely that inequalities and equalities among games behave mathematically as expected. When added, they remain equal or unequal in the same direction. Here is another position we encountered earlier. Since the ground is actually a single node, branches connected to the ground may be slid back and forth to give us another perspective on the overall situation. For some purposes, it is helpful to regard this game as the sum of two different games. The eastern portion of this graph is seen to consist of our original letter N and another graph with the same shape, but whose branches are oppositely colored. We'll call that one minus N. There is a simple strategy by which the second player can win the sum of minus N plus N. Namely, whatever move the first player makes in either component, the second player can make the corresponding move in the other component. And that strategy can be repeated until both components are gone and the second player has won. Similarly, we could construct the negative of any graph by reversing the colors of the branches which are colored blue or red and leaving the green branches unchanged. Let's now look at the western portion of our earlier position. Let's first straighten up each component. We claim that the second player can win. To see this, let's consider all five possible opening moves. If the first player takes either of the moves shown with his scissors, his opponent can reply with the other one, yielding the zero position now shown in the east. So either first move labeled A can be defeated by playing the other A. Similarly, either branch labeled B can be defeated by playing the other B. Finally, if red opens by taking his only branch which touches the ground, his remaining position is soon seen to be hopeless. So every possible opening move can be defeated. Either player going second can win, so the value of this game is zero. Suppose we let X be the value of the two-branch graph consisting of a red branch supported by a blue branch. Then, as we have just shown, X plus X minus one equals zero. Evidently, each X is exactly one half move advantage for left. Returning to our earlier position, which consisted of a baby C plus W plus N, we see that its value must be zero because it is the sum of zeros. Here is another game which can also be won by the second player. Adding it into our C plus W plus N allows us to conclude that after only four moves, the value of the game was zero. In the next segment, we'll investigate evaluations and decompositions of other Hackenbush positions, including the following evaluation of every letter in my first name.